the keys to success of China's most dynamic cities. Changsha, a city where human activities can be traced back to a Paleolithic age, a city where urban construction started some 2,000 years ago. Changsha, a city with booming economy anchored by pillar industries such as heavy machinery, transportation and entertainment. And the city of vibrant culture where age-old traditions hit TV shows, delicious food and modern living collide into one. We meet with locals, policy makers and entrepreneurs. We visit factories, historical sites, street food booths and ecological farms. All these only on CGTN. Hello and welcome to the live streaming of the Rising Star City special program. Today we're in the Provincial Museum of Hunan in its capital city, Changsha. In the next hour or so, we're going to take you through the museum to show you the culture and history of this beautiful city uh, through all the artifacts uh, and that, that were discovered more than 2,000 years ago. And with me today is the lovely guide, Monica. Thank you. Welcome, Monica. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Hunan Museum and the exhibition of Ma Wandui Han Dynasty tombs in Changsha. My name is Monica, and I'm going, I'm, I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to show you a tour about the collection of the world's most significant archaeological discoveries of the 20th century. Yeah, my apologies. Uh, you have <laughs> probably noticed the high difference. Okay. I, have to, I have to say, it's, it's really my fault because I'm extremely, you probably can't tell, but I'm extremely tall. Right. I'm about six feet tall, so she's average. Um, I'm just, you know, so apologize. You're going to probably feel it in your neck because you're going to have to like, yeah, I'm look at fine. me like yeah. that. It's <laughs> good for So um, we're starting from this picture here, right? Oh, so yeah. I'm not an expert of uh, Chinese characters, but yeah. you can, uh, from this, you can easily see that this is Sorry? not the same as our, you know, modern characters. Yeah, modern right? characters of, uh, of Chinese. Tell well, us about that. Actually, this is the Chinese version of the exhibition title. You know, every character in the title is taken from the bamboo slips and the silk manuscripts excavated from the tombs, mm -hmm. making the title so special okay. and symbolic. Okay, so this is actually how they wrote characters back in, in the day. Western Han okay. Dynasty. Okay. And also you can see all the... from Shinjui's tomb. Okay. All you right. may wonder, what is the painting? Yeah. And who is Shinjui? Who is Shinjui? Oh, we're going to find out. All right, let's go. So where are we going now? Now Where's we are marching to the section one. The exhibition is composed of four sections. Section one, the great archaeological discoveries, mm. forms the backdrop of the exhibition and it tells us about the tomb's discovery okay. and excavation and the, and the identity. The two mounds on the surface of Ma Wandui Han dynasty tombs. Okay. And the, the, the two mounds join in middle together, and so just like a saddle on the horse. So this so is the picture tomb. of the site where the tombs were Ta discovered. Uh, yes, okay. taken in the 1950s. 1950s, okay. So, so this is before people, it was discovered uh, then. Uh, yes, okay. yes. So the local people called the mounds the saddle mound. Oh. And according to the geography of Changsha County in Qing Dynasty, uh, the two mounds were recorded as the burial site of Ma Ying, mm. and the ruler of Kingdom Chu and his family. So the two mounds also called by the local people as Ma Wang Dui. Mm the name in our title of the exhibition. It's actually the, not the meaning, owner of the tombs. Of course, meaning okay. the burial site, the burial mounds of King Ma, mm. but it's not actually true. Okay, and let's see why. And during 1972 to 1974, the two, sorry, the three tombs were reviewed. Okay. Here lies the model of the three tombs. Wow. 
So that's a smaller smaller version. size model of the okay, the site. site. Right, okay. Right. You can see the two one lies in the east mount uh -huh. and uh, following the barrel system of Chu. Mm. Uh, its excavation was performed during January to April mm. in 1972 uncovering over 1,000 pieces of funerary items, including exequate lacquerware and beautiful silk weaving products, mm. as, well as, as well as a well-preserved female corpse, oh, female which astonished okay. the sphere of archaeology and, and even the world. So that's the tomb of the wife then? The tomb of the wife, okay. Xinjui. She was the first discovered. But not the yes, first period, actually. So these okay. three tombs are numbered by okay. the order of being discovered. Oh. And tomb two lies in the east, mm. the, the, sorry, the west mound. It's special, you know, it, can, it has a round opening. It's very different right. looking from the other two. And a square bottom. Yeah. So it follows the burial system of pre Qing period. Oh. It, it was uh, the owner of the tomb two was buried earlier, much oh, earlier than, I see. The, okay. than those of tomb tombs one and three. Mm. And you can see um, tombs one and two lies together, mm. side to side, and east to west. And they, and they have um, parallel tomb ramps. So suggesting a convention that, or called, sorry, called uh, a separate burial mm. of husband and wife in Western Han Dynasty. Mm, okay. And tomb three is located to the south of tomb one, it also follows the burial system of Chu, mm. but has a smaller size. Mm. So according to that, that, that is the sun. According mm. to the conventions, the owner of Tomb Three is the descendant okay. uh, of one of that of Tomb One. one. Two. Okay, yes. got it. Also in Tomb Three, we have a bamboo slip, okay. which is so special. Yeah. Have a look at here. This bamboo slip was unearthed from the tomb three, and on the bamboo slips, the, the specific of the funeral and or the burial was recorded. Wow. The Chinese characters on the slip can be explained as okay. the twenty-fourth day of the second month in one hundred and sixty-eight BC. This is the very wow. date of the owner of tomb three was buried. Okay, so it's easy for the archaeologists to know when it was buried. Yeah, yeah. You'll have to read the you records. Yeah, you don't have to actually do an exam. Just look at the... Save the, the, the last time. time. So 168 BC is when the sun was sun, right. buried. Exactly. Okay. What do we have here? Oh, uh, that's adorable one. Yeah, it's a cute it's a Very good choice. Rings. Okay. This one is a clay figure yeah. from tomb two. You know, it's also called a funerary figurine, oh, functioning okay. as a guardian of the dead soul and okay. the, and and the tomb, like you know, okay. stretching the arms yeah, to, yeah. to to keep the people away. <laughs> Doesn't look too scary to to uh, scary. scare people. Yeah, it's, but it's, but that, that's very, very well one. preserved. I mean, of that's course. the actual piece, right? The it, it's the piece, original, original item. Right. Mm -hmm. So you can see there's red the furs and the um, you know straws. And this, it doesn't further decay, like if you, in the museum, like it's not going to further decay from the oxygen that we, and, and the lights and everything? Well, actually, on the moment of being excavated, the, uh -huh. all the funerary item had been, you know, preserved. Preserved, oh, in okay, a so this has a, some material, material on, right on it to preserve it, okay. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Wow. It's, it's, it's a lot okay bigger. to be exposed. Yeah, <laughs> it's a lot bigger than, okay. than the picture looks. <laughs> yeah, it's like almost the size of... Like okay. actual human. Actual human. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Now we are going to learn the identity of the two owners. Okay. Okay. It will be a long way. Uh, <laughs> from what we've seen, that everything is identified quite easily because everything mm -hmm. is recorded, <laughs> oh, yeah. written, and even, it's well even, preserved. Like you can actually see the characters. Uh, yes. Yes. You'll have to, you know. It's not so um, difficult. <laughs> To to distinguish uh, which era, which dynasty yeah. the items belong to. Yeah. So that's okay. good. Okay. Okay. Before the excavation, yeah. the identity of the owner of uh -huh. the bare mounds yeah. remained a mystery. Okay. But the key to solve this problem is the three seals from mm. tomb two. Okay. The first seal is made of jade. Okay. 
and carved with Chinese traditional characters. Okay. Li Chang. Oh, okay. And according to some historical records, Li Chang was a contributed military general oh, wow. and a loyal follower of Liu Bang, the founding emperor of Western Han Dynasty. Okay. And the second seal is made of copper. Okay. It doesn't seem so different, right? No, they look the same. <laughs> and carved with the characters Chancellor of okay. Changsha. Okay. What is Changsha? In the first year of Western Han Dynasty, Liu Bang established seven vassal kingdoms, among which the kingdom of Changsha was assigned to Rui, and Li Chang was appointed to be the chancellor, oh. meaning a leading official mm. at the minor court and yeah. the military general in the state of Changsha. Okay, yeah. so you know his name, you know his position. His position and, and the title. The title of, of the guy. Okay. Uh, the third seal is also made of copper okay. and carved with a seal of Marquis Dai. Oh. Uh, due to his contributions to settling the rebellion, caused by the king of Huainan. Mm. Um, Li Chang was nobled, Marquis died, mm. and given a fief of 700 households. 700 households, right. wow. Okay. It's a very noble one. Wow. Um, next, we're going to learn the owner of Tomb Wan. Okay. The identity of Tomb Wan's occupant was, was confirmed by a seal. Mm. Would you like to see? Sure. Okay. Mm. By a seal discovered in a toiletry case. Okay, so according to the different. characters, yeah. right? According to the correct characters, the occupant, she was the wife of Marquis Dai and named Xin Zhui. Xin Zhui, okay. And she's That's exactly the perfectly well preserved female she's corpse. The corpse that, okay. <laughs> so the other two corpses are um, not, really, not that not, well preserved. Not really well conditioned. Okay, okay interesting. Because so the, it's really by chance, I guess. Yeah. That the, oh, no, actually, the sealing ability oh. of tomb one of the Shindri's tomb is the best. Even though it was the. Oh, right, okay. Here we go. Okay, got we it. Tomb three's owner. Oh, this way. Two. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't forget the sun. The sun, yeah. <laughs> she. Okay. 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 Okay, according to the oh, restored there. seal from okay. his tomb, mm. the owner of tomb three is presumed to be Li Xi, oh. the son of Li Chang and okay. Xin Zhui. Oh, I see. Also, based on the various, you know, the, the, the weapons yeah. and the paintings in, her, in, in his tomb, we, it, we can say that Li Xi was also a mm. military general, mm. just like his father. Okay. Here we go. Cool. Now we are marching so to... Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. right. Really well preserved, yeah, yes, very well preserved. which is rare in around the world. Of course. Actually. Now we're marching to the section two, life and art. Mm. This section you know, uses um, tomb relics to recreate the food, clothing, and living conditions of the family of the family of that Marquis oh. showing their expectations about the quality of life okay. and their passion right. for life. So this is a scene, a restored scene, composed of the artifacts from Xin Zhui's tomb. Okay. Showing how Xin Zhui appreciated the song and dance performance. Art and, you know. and music, okay. yeah. So is that a band we're looking at? This is a, yes, it's a song and dance orchestra. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You know, so these figurines were actually wooden, made of wood, wood, made of wood, wood and yeah. they were buried in a in a, in a side, side chamber, chamber of Shindri's to tomb. In, in Shindri's tomb. Yes. Okay. You can see there are three so, rows of wooden so, figures. So for her, music and, and yeah. art is of very course. important. Like, what do like we see the, here? Uh, oh, what do sorry? we see on this, this side? This is an audience seat. Oh. You know, the furniture here is very is in low design because in Han Dynasty, people tended to, to, to have a seated on the ground lifestyle. Oh, so this is where you sit? Where the, a person of, sorry, a person from noble class, oh, like Xin okay. Zhui, Xin Zhui, for example, seated. would lay here. Right, right. when appreciating the And this is where she like, puts can, her... Can, can oh. in line. Here. So like, you lay like this and put your <laughs> elbow right. like that. Yeah. Oh, wow, that's very comfortable. So that's also buried, the whole thing, like the this. Whole thing. Yeah, oh, yeah. wow. So not just the the band, but actually the seat. <laughs> a well designed. Very, and very well designed. Really so, yeah. high quality. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's continue. 
Also, there are other wooden figurines from Shindri's tomb, like in this cabinet. These wooden figures actually stands, uh, stand for the servants to take care of the hostess in That's her afterlife. That's just for Shindri herself? That's yes, many? exactly. Okay. You know, so these uh, are these all figures made of wood? Are, uh, mm -hmm, these are made of wood? Are all made of wood. Okay. And the, the, this one is of the highest ranking. Okay. And so he was named um, after the two characters mm. carved under her shoes called mm. Guan Ren, mm. meaning a hectic man or according to some ancient notes, mm. a eunuch. Okay. <laughs> so, so he functioned as a steward of the, 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 the servant group. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is there a reason that these figurines are relatively small, not the full okay. size? Uh, the, the higher the rank is, oh, the, the, bigger. the figure, the bigger the, bigger the, figure, the figure is. is. Okay, got it. Okay. Now we're entering the amusement room of the Marquis Dai family. Wow. You know, here you can see a cube that's a toy box containing a set of tools for Bo Xi, which was a considerably popular game in Han Dynasty. And on your left, there are wooden Bian Zhong and Bian Qing, which okay. are popular musical instruments mm. in, in ancient China. Yeah. Oh. How do you like it? It's really so well small. made. Right. They're all smaller right. versions of the actual uh, oh, yeah, yes. of the actual right. instruments. Yeah. Because the Emperor Wen of Han Dynasty once made a decree uh -huh. saying that no metals should be used in tombs or oh. or funerals. So that's so people have to produce the wooden, wooden artifacts, artifacts, smaller artifacts Season, to yeah. as substitute of the metal ones. It just amazes me. It's not just like I bury with money and that's it. Like they actually have all of the actual items together in the in the in the okay. tombs. Okay, here are some other musical instruments from the tombs. Uh, what I'd like to introduce is the this one called Se. Okay. The Se is now in really perfect condition. Yeah. The, the strings are complete, yeah. the, the, the structures are, uh, you know, comprehensive. Yeah. And would you like to have a guess about the material of the strings? Um, it looks like some, like some type of wool or like uh -huh. an intestine of some animal, I guess. Uh, it's actually, they're made of silk. They're made of silk? Right. But yeah. that's still, that's so... That's Surprising, so well, huh? Yeah, preserved. <laughs> and I mean, it looks very durable yeah, also. How yeah. is it that it didn't decay yeah, over 2,000 years? Oh, well, it, because it was unearthed from Shindri's tomb. Oh. Uh, a tomb with a well-designed tomb structure to so create a oxygen, yes, to oxygen-free environment in, with low temperature. I see. So the strings and the bodies can be really well preserved. That's amazing. And in the exhibition, we have another evidence to show the sealing ability of Shindui's tomb. Okay. Here we go. Well, the evidence is the ding, also known as tripods. Okay. You see, these seven tri tripods are were unearthed from Shindui's tomb together with the lacquer ladles. Um, the ladles oh, usually really? sit, 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 in, sit within the oh, tripods okay, okay. for scooping food out. Okay, then, then these seven tripods suggests that um, the Marquis of Dai's family you know, was the seven tripod nobles. Okay. It's a very high so that's ranking. That's a very high ranking noble. Okay. And tripod was used as food containers in Han Dynasty. So interestingly, yeah, were there food the inside? Way, when they, of course. Really? Wow. Of course, the, the very tree pot in the middle uh -huh. contained slices of lotus over 2,000 years ago, a moment of being discovered. Like you could actually yeah. see Actual the food, lotus yes. inside. Yes. However, unfortunately, <laughs> due, to, due to exposure to oxygen and being shaken during transport, oh. These slices quickly dissolved in water and okay. vanished. Okay. But do we at least get a picture? Of course of we lotus. have a picture. Of course <laughs> we have a picture. And this picture down oh, is here a picture? Oh, wow. is the right is the exact photo taken immediately before the slices wow. vanished. Okay. 
That's I'll stop the sign. It's going. Just keep going. <laughs> so the there's a lot do more. They, do they all have food in it, or just that one? All of them have. All of them have, have food, have food in inside. Mm -hmm. These are all the lacquerware, the well designed, you, beautiful lacquerware. I remember you saying mm -hmm. that these things are super expensive, aren't they? They're worth a lot. I would say um, considerably expensive. Back then or now? Back then. Both. Both. Like, <laughs> I remember you saying something, one of them worth like the same as a house here. All right, like, uh, like a lacquer plate? Yeah. One lacquer plate was probably a beach house. <laughs> Really, a beach probably, house? Probably, probably. Okay. Presumably a beach house. So we got yeah. two, four, six, eight, 15 okay. beach houses right here okay. in this okay. in this window. Yeah. Okay, there, there are. <laughs> okay, let's uh, okay. continue. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Let's, let's, not, let's, let's not be so shallow. I don't want to be responsible okay. for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Out of these seven pieces uh -huh. of lacquerware from the tombs, yeah. they Lacquer, lacquer, lacquer sorry, plates. The lacquer plates yeah. stand out for the civet cat design. Oh. Civet cats were kept as pets in Western Han Dynasty by the people from noble class. Oh. They were used to, you know, people, people thought mm. this design can scare off the evil animals. So they print the, so they paint oh, the images of cute. civet cats on the plates. Okay. okay. Wow. Yeah. So because of the well-preserved environment, mm -hmm. these patterns are still very vividly shown now uh, yeah. on the surface mm -hmm. of these plates and pots. Because they are from the noble class, so they are tools, they, they, the artifacts, they, the tools, the items they use must be, you know. These are also, right? Out. These are for... These are wine, oh, wine, containers. wine containers. Okay, mm -hmm. why are they so different? Like, are because they made of different things? Because they're different... Material. <laughs> Materials. Okay, right. so like, that's all uh, wood. Uh, right? These two are made of uh, ceramics. Oh, ceramics. And this okay. one, like that's a wood. wood. Okay. Mm -hmm. wow. Made of wood. Yeah. Wow. Shall we continue? Yes, please. Fascinating. Well, apart from the lacquerware, uh -huh. as nobles, as yeah. people from noble class, yeah. the family of Marquis Stai paid, uh, you know, considerably much attention mm -hmm. to their appearance. So the uh, clothing of and the toiletry <laughs> tools, <laughs> of course, <Yeah. laughs> the toiletry tools are, you know, extremely sophisticated. Wow. In this cabinet, there are there are male toiletry tools okay. and and, to and toiletry cases like the mirror, copper mirror, okay. in Western Han Dynasty. Oh, that's a mirror, which is um, very famous. Is that the back of the mirror? China. Mm -hmm. okay. It's the back, back of the mirror, of the mirror. Okay. To, to show the, the details. You know, yes. right? the, yeah, the mm -hmm. patterns are beautiful. How do you and know it's from a male? Is this discovered from uh, the male they were from, tombs? They were from the tombs two and three, oh, the father and, and the son. The son. Mm -hmm. So they're also very well preserved. Mm -hmm. Even though they're not actually, uh, that they, that they didn't have a really seating ability. But but these things is covered in is painted in lacquer. Oh, okay. In the dark brown lacquer, yeah, so it can be our, well our, preserved. Our, our light is okay. Turn off for a bit, <laughs> but like it just shows you like this environment is actually it's quite really dark. dark. Mm -hmm. Like we have lights on us all the time. Someone is actually holding a. A light and shining on us, <laughs> no, but this actually environment is quite dark. Is this to preserve the the, the artifact better? Um, some, um, somewhat. Somewhat, but right? Somewhat, so you're not supposed yeah, to use a, flashlights. Uh, and also, it's a on the, it's a design inspired by the lacquerware okay. that we have seen. Oh, you know, okay. Because it's red and dark, so right. the, the, the exhibition so was inspired by the oh, lacquerware. So dark and red and, mm -hmm. and okay. And right. what, I, what I want to introduce is the female toiletry case. Mm. It was a possession of Xinjui. Okay. Mm -hmm. You see, um, the, the, this toiletry case have two tiers. Uh -huh. uh, the core of the cover and the body are made of fiber, and the bases of both tiers are made of you know wood. Wood. Oh, in the lower that. tier, there are nine carved depressions, okay. and holding, uh, which hold nine different small boxes in different shapes. Inside the boxes are, you know, are like uh, makeup, rouge, a uh, thick powder puff, a hair piece, two combs, and a, and a hair piece? Yes, made of real hair. <laughs> so they even care about volume. 
mm -hmm. back in the day yeah, yeah. to make your hair look. Well, well, the, the the people from the noble class in Han Dynasty tended to you know take a special medicine that has that can that contains mercury. I don't know. To make your hair darker. Oh uh, yeah, no, to to to, to keep I don't know to to thicker. to have an internal life or something. To maintain health or have an internal life. Interesting. So the mercury has caused the loss of hair. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, so that, you know, I see. They had I to see. wear so a hair is, piece. Oh, this is to make your hair look more <laughs> volume mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because of the loss of hair. Okay. Mm -hmm, yeah. And this is their among comb? all the yeah. yeah among all the toiletry tools, mm -hmm. these two combs mm -hmm. was the attention. Was the attention? Mm -hmm. Why? Because and um, one is called shu. Mm -hmm. And the other B, mm -hmm. especially the B is only 4.9 centimeters, mm -hmm. but has 74 teeth. Mm -hmm. The teeth are placed really close to each other, attesting the high level of craftsmanship in Han Dynasty. That's true. Yeah. But why do they need it so close to each other? Well, oh, in ancient well, times, it is, the dirt uh, out of the hair. it is not frequent for people to, 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 to wash, wash their, their hair, hair, you know, to, oh to, to use shampoos, conditioners, or something. Of, you know, the uh, so comb to get the, the lice. So when there was a uh, dust or uh, some, uh, <laughs> so I don't know, box. <laughs> All right, got it. Okay. okay, Western world used to call China Ceres, okay. meaning the kingdom of silk. Oh, and Western yeah. Han Dynasty was one of the peaks of silk production mm -hmm. and trade in ancient China. So here you can see all the oh, various awesome. kinds of fa fabrics okay. made by different silk weaving techniques. Uh, you are looking wow. at jin silk. Okay. And on your left there are gores and the juan silk. Have a look. That that seems kind of ordinary, right? <laughs> but you can know, you can tell like they all yes. have like this is really this is a gorse beautiful. designed with some um, patterns patterns right? right. Yeah. Like on the wall, you can see all like the patterns combined silver. into one pattern. Look at so that! Like, this is floor design. Yeah, like quite colorful too. Mm -hmm. It's really well preserved. Wow. Silk, very piece. thin. <laughs> Huh? Very thin, right? So mm -hmm. these were all discovered in the tombs of mm. different from the different three tombs, tombs. Yeah. from the three tombs, but most of them but from the Shinjo tomb. A clothing, or were they just individual pieces? Like were they? You from know, uh, some of them pieces? are you know are the pieces. Uh -huh. and some some, some of the clothing, clothing was worn on oh. the tomb owners. Right, right. Okay. It's a part of the burial system of Chu. Oh. The corpse had to be covered in clothes oh, and pieces. Of course, yeah. Okay, with all these fabrics, some items for daily use had been produced. Like yeah. you're looking at the scented bag, hold it up, sorry, held by Xinjui. Oh. At the moment, have been discovered. Wow. And, and this is a scented pillow stuffed with a medicine called Pei Lan. Okay, so everything is made of silk. Yeah, well, everything's made of. Why would you China, use cotton when you have silk? Yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and this gown yeah, is one of the Shindri's uh, Shin, items okay. made, made with Beautiful. all the fabrics. Okay. Okay. The red one can be worn as uh, in, in, in war on uh, formal occasions. Okay, very festive. Mm -hmm. Because it's with the, the agno lapel. Oh, you know, yeah. like a, uh, there's a longer, is a extension yeah. of the lapel. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. and, gold and, and the other gown with the floral design okay. can be worn at home. Okay. So beautiful. That's very nice too. The color, it's the so designs comfy. are really, really beautiful. Yeah, I, I, I want to get one of those. <laughs> <laughs> you guys should have it's a gift <laughs> shop that sells these things. We have scarves made out of that. Yeah, that, 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 that's that great. That would that, uh -huh. be a great idea. Okay, so this gown uh -huh. is most special one. Okay. It is the lightest gown in the world. It's called plain online the gorse gown. Oh, that's the one. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's the really about famous this one. one. It's very it's light. lightest. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, from top to the bottom, its total length is a hundred and twelve. Sorry, a hundred and twenty-eight centimeters. Mm, okay. From left to right, its sleeve length is a hundred and nineteen centimeters. Okay. 
but it only weighs 49 grams. 49 grams. Mm -hmm. And the other gown with the diagonal lapel, this is a straight lapel. Yeah. The other gown with the diagonal lapel only weighs 48 grams. So the fabric, which is as thin as a cicada's wing, yeah. was described by the people of Han Dynasty as light as, as cloud and mist. Oh, okay. And it's quite see-through too. Mm -hmm. isn't it? It's, it's a translucent. Right? It's translucent. Yes. Yeah. How do you wear it then? How how did Shindri how did she wear it? Wear it? <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have the privilege. <laughs> okay. How did she wear it? Yeah. Actually, there are there are a lot of thoughts, but most scholars believe that this translucent piece of clothing may have been worn on the outside of fancy clothing. You know, to enhance its beauty and giving it a gorgeous dream-like quality. Oh, I see. Well, so I this piece of clothing is now the lightest, earliest, and the thinnest discovered to date, wow. attesting the you high level of craftsmanship, craftsmanship yeah. of, yeah. of silkworm cultivating. You could also thing. wear it as an undergarment, I guess, right? It's quite. <laughs> I, I, I won't I say that. <laughs> I think it would look good. Oh, some scholars think so. Yeah, right? Some I mean, scholars think I mean so. it's a nice, sexy mm -hmm. lingerie type of thing <laughs> <laughs> that the, 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 the she could have worn, you know, back in the day. We don't it know. Could have been, it could but be, yeah. <laughs> now we are entering the section three the okay. collection of bamboo slips oh, and the silk, okay. <coughs> silk manuscripts. Okay. In this section, it brings the uh, scientific and technological uh, achievements oh, and the ideological okay. literature okay. recorded in the slips and manuscripts. Mm. Over 13, uh, sorry, over 130,000 mm. words covered the knowledge of various fields. So the, here lies the work of astronomy. Mm. It is called div divination based on the observation of five planets. Mm. Wow. Have a, let's have a look. Have a look. Mm -hmm. uh, its content is made of, made well, of two parts. Kind of the see, divination so. text on the left mm. and the positional tables. The divination te texts predicts the good or bad fortune appearance. Mm. Based on. And the positional tables records the positions of Venus, Saturn, and uh, Jupiter for wow. 70 years by eye Six. observation, by eye observation of people of Han Dynasty. Was it accurate? Oh, well, well the, the Venus synodic period was measured at 584.4 days, mm. which is only 0 0.48 days more than today's scientific measurement. Wow. Okay, so so this they is the, represents the idea the, of the right. solar system already. Mm -hmm. Represents the advanced astronomical yeah. achievements made over 2,000 years ago by only eye observation. Just to observe with their naked eye for over 70 and, years. Yes. Like you said, they, had, they had already have a concept of the, yeah, cosmos, the cosmos, the universe. Yeah. Okay, as for military and the geography, two maps prevail. And the left one describe, sorry, the left one describes the uh, geological information mm. about the south area of Kingdom of Changsha, mm. and the right one uh, demonstrates the military distribution within the area. Wow. So as we have mentioned, the owner of Tomb Three was the military general. Mm. So these two maps may have been used in battles or wars. Now and they we are were buried with the people. with the owner, right? And now now we're going to learn some Chinese medicine. medicine. Yeah, Chinese One of the symbolic work of Chinese medicine lies here. It is called prescriptions for uh, fifty-two kinds of disease. Okay. Two kinds of disease diseases. Sorry. Right. And this page records a surgery for okay. rectal ulcer and tumor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as described here, you know. Uh, so it's not true patient, that Chinese medicine doesn't have surgery. They, there is surgery. Mm -hmm. There are surgeries. Yeah. There are systematic and functional surgeries. 
Would you like to know how, the how, details? How, 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 yes, please. <laughs> you know, as described, okay, as recorded. Yeah, tell me. When a patient is diagnosed with a rectal ulcer or tumor, okay. the doctor should take a dog bladder okay. and cover the bladder on one end of a bamboo straw. Then, then, then shove the end <laughs> into the patient's anus and uh, uh, and to blow sure the bladder, <laughs> bladder to a, into a bigger size and pull the rectum out. Actually, it's not funny because it's a useful tool it's to, not, to, it's to not pull funny, the rectum I, out. I really hope that this is done. I really don't know what to say. No? With uh, anesthetic. <laughs> Because uh -huh. it, so, it sounds very painful, <laughs> but it works, right? So you it pull works, the really intestine uh, out and, and, of the patient. And next, take a and knife you... to remove the ulcer or, okay. or tumor, and then apply some medicine, maybe Huangqing, okay. to stop the bleeding and uh, reduce the inflammation. How do you put it back? <laughs> well, <laughs> that's um, as recorded here. It's, yeah, it's not a joke. It's recorded here. Yeah, um, when. <laughs> And normally, normally after the surgery, the patient's rectum can self-restore into the abdomen. Oh. Uh, if there is a failure of self-restoration, the doctor should uh, apply some oily medicine onto mm -hmm. the rectum and hang the patient upside down. <laughs> and you know, via gravity, <laughs> and <laughs> wait for the rectum to restore themselves. Okay. Yeah, itself. we shouldn't be joking about this. is serious uh -huh. okay. medicine. Uh, yeah. It's serious surgery. It's and that, really that serious. probably have saved a lot of lives. So we're not joking about this. It's, it's just it's, it's fascinating just how life. this has been recorded uh -huh. from more than 2,000 years ago and that actually Chinese medicine has surgeries, um, includes surgeries, and they were done, you know, yeah. way back in the day, right? And yeah. actually, there's more. Okay. If it still fails, uh -huh. you know, just the doctor shall. I take a bucket of ice water, you know, just and surprisingly pour it <laughs> towards the patient. It's not funny <laughs> towards the patient, you know, so that the patient would inhale so hard, like, <gasps> and then the rectum can uh, can be automatically <laughs> restored. Oh, got it. Got it. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not funny, really. It's not funny. It's no, it's really, amazing. It's, a, it's fascinating. It's a serious, it's a serious medical, medical recording. Procedure, yes. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> Another work shows us a an exercise in Western Han Dynasty. Oh, I like exercise. Here you go. Okay, let's see. Okay. Oh wow. Are you a fan of exercise? Well, as you can see, not so much, but like <laughs> I like the idea. Just a fan, right? <laughs> I, I, I'm just a fan of the idea oh, of come exercise. On, you're in good figure. No, you're in good no figure, I okay. don't know. Okay, okay. Okay, okay, this exercise chart was unearthed from Li Xi's tomb, the tomb three. Oh, wow. Uh -huh. it, this is now the earliest existing chart of Qi Gong Dao Yin in color. Oh, wow. Qi Gong means a yeah. exercise yeah. you know to cure diseases and maintain health mm -hmm. by stretching the human bodies and uh, adjusting one's inhaling and exhaling rhythms. Wow. Okay there are totally you know, 44 figures on okay. the manuscript. So this is right. There are the lining line drawings of the and figures. And they all have a name, right? Like there's actually like Actually, they are the explanatory information. Oh, okay. So what what it does? You know, they function as uh, no, sorry. They they help explain the names and the functions of the poses. Like this. Uh, is, for this example, uh, called annoyed, an right? anxiety in anxiety. Chinese. Anxiety. So, so, so people what? believed the this this pose can help you know relieve people's anxiety and really? depression. Can I try? Of course. Okay. So I try. Take a seat. Okay, you should start with a standing okay, pose standing and slowly feet. change to the posture. In the process, feeling the air out of your body. Mm. Now you are out of, you are free of anxiety. <laughs> perfect, perfect. It works. <laughs> perfect. It works. I feel much more calm from this live streaming. Mm -hmm. Much okay. more. Yeah. <laughs> Well, oh, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Do we have a copy of that somewhere? Like, can I find it online? Because I want to try them at home. Well, then you have to visit the souvenir shop. Oh, okay. <laughs> so there is something like that uh -huh. in the souvenir shop, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. We yeah. have made, uh, the Hunan Museum has made all of, made a lot of 
products okay. the, yeah, that'd from be the great. Qigong Dong chart. No, I'm going to go, no, I'm serious. I, I'm going to get one of those and I'm going to try all the poses because I'm, I'm telling you, like, they <laughs> must work. Because uh -huh. they're from so long ago, right? Like, they, there must be some scientific uh, philosophy or whatever behind it. Right. Yeah. Now we're entering the section four, the dream of life everlasting. In this section, it um, put, 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 it shows the family's knowledge of the kingdom of heaven, of the kingdom of heaven, and their concepts about life, death, and you know, inter and e eternity. <clears throat> okay. So the very artifact to show their concepts about life and death is the T-shaped silk painting. Mm. This painting is from Shindri's tomb. Okay. You can see uh, it, it is composed of three pieces of Juan silk that are sewn together and uh, bamboo. Uh, okay. Sorry, according to the bamboo slips in, <coughs> in the tomb, the painting should be called Fei Yi, mm. meaning not a cloth for wearing mm. or a flying garment. Also, there's a bamboo stick yeah. wrapped on Wrapped, wrapped at the top horizontal edge and tied with a silk ribbon. Mm. So the painting can be raised up. Mm. So something you hold while it has Functioning as a banner, as a hun fan, oh. meaning a banner featuring the portrait of the deceased and leading the funeral procession to the grave and being placed at the top of the interior coffin lid once inside it's the tomb. really beautiful. Mm -hmm. The painting is done in black ink and color paint. So the composition can be divided into three registers. Okay. You know, the, the celestial realm mm. in the upper register, the human realm in the middle, and the underworld in the lower. Mm. In, so the believe, mm -hmm. yeah. in the celestial realm there, <clears throat> you can see a draconic solar deity, Zhu Long, mm. sitting in the middle. And on his left, there is a sun containing the golden crow, and the other eight are resting on the branches of the Fusang tree. And for your information, the golden crow is actually the record of sunspots observed by people of Han Dynasty. On his right, there's a moon with a toad and a rabbit on it, yeah. and a flying fairy balloon. Right. Right. Other features like you know flying moons and the guardians of the heaven gate can be seen in the celestial realm. So this is this represents the heaven, heaven the kingdom of heaven, and, and afterlife. Mm -hmm. Where, okay, got it. Okay, in the human realm, okay. you can see the soul of Xin Jui is slowly ascending to the heaven, mm -hmm. at the heaven commissioner's welcome, and accompanied by her mates. The, is she the one in the red? The, right, right in the middle. Right in, oh, she's it's a portrait the, of the, the deceased. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And her Got family it. is having a grand ceremony, a oh. grand funeral okay. for her moor and memorial. Mm. Okay, in the, in the underground, there's a giant holding up the earth, the whiteboard, mm. you know, yeah. holding up the earth while having two giant fishes under control. Oh. So this painting as a whole, in a romantic manner, shows the people's, how people of Han Dynasty imagined the kingdom of heaven mm. and their pursuit of immortality right. for a, a, ascendance That's to the really heaven. fascinating. Mm -hmm. sure. yep, okay. Besides, um, pe <coughs> people, in Han Dynasty, sorry, people in Han Dynasty believed that the soul was affiliated to the body. Mm -hmm. So they had to take um, various measures to preserve the corpse. Right. One of the best examples is the uh, Shindri's corpse. Right. Yeah. You know, her yeah, body was uh, soaked, was soaked in a special, in a very special antiseptic mm. liquid, mm. and um, you know sealed deep down a well structure, a well designed tomb structure. Mm. You know, so <clears throat> so thanks to these preservation measures, the body and the um, under funerary items or under a you know oxygen free mm. and bacteria free temperature with oh, sorry this is really dark okay <laughs> environment it's with very low starting temperature. to 
<laughs> Bring me it's out. It's dark here. It's a bit. Would you like? Is it ready for the media? <laughs> I don't know. I can, I, the, can, I'd do you like know how the, to turn the lights on? I'd like to That's take the media as a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> no, you already. No, now it's a spoiler bit. Spoiler alert! It's a, it's a bit. Come on. Scary. Come on. Oh man. Can we? Okay. You have a light? Can you open the light? Okay. They're going to turn the lights on. Okay, so I guess we're going to have a surprise uh -huh. in a bit when they turn on. They might be ready for the media. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> So you were the, talking about the corp of the so the other corps were decayed basically because they were not as well preserved. Mm -hmm. Okay, so do we but get bones and ah uh, yes skull, we, have, uh, skulls, we had remains of the, the remains of the other two three. corps. But uh, as for the tomb too, mm. Li Chang's tomb, yeah, uh, the tomb was robbed oh, right. on various occasions. So, so the, the remains and most of the funerary items. Were stolen. Oh. When was and the remains are disappeared. So oh, have, have disappeared. Okay. I see. I see. Okay. So this that's why most surprise. of the things that we saw. <laughs> wow. This is my surprise. No. Okay. Wow. Here is a restored scene of the Shindri's tomb pit. So this and is the actual wall. size mm -hmm. of yep. the tomb pit. Yep. It's huge. It's really huge it's because huge. From, from north to south, its total length is 19.5 meters. From east to west, it is 17.8 uh, meters. From to, sorry, from the opening to the bottom mm -hmm. of the tomb, its total depth is 16 meters, or 20.5 meters, including the top mounts. I know. I mean, it, it, it does sound like a lot, but like when you actually see it. It's, it's a lot bigger right. than, it, than the measurements. It's, it looks a lot bigger. Wow. I mean, they must have taken Easy. years to yeah. dig such a big hole. Well, it, only, it only took four months. Four to months ex, to dig? To excavate, wow. to, to excavate the whole tombs. Oh, to, to excavate. Yeah, mm -hmm. but like back in the day when they built this, it must have taken. Mm -hmm. Right, long, long time. Mm -hmm. So this is a glass. This is a glass. Oh, okay. Wow, I'm a bit actually scared of height. Yeah. So this is making me. Now, the media playing. Sorry, the media at the on the wall of yeah. the tomb pit is specifically, particularly designed by Hunan Museum to show the process of Shindri's soul, so ascending to the heaven. Just now we have seen a very dark situation, right? Uh, it means Shindri Soul has had, have been going through the underworld. Now the scene is scene has transformed into the color uh, the colors of red mm. and gold. It means the, the the undying world, in human world, like the mount like the mountain of Kunlun, right? Right. It's it was the symbol of undying, wow. of eternity in Han Dynasty. Wow. Then you will see a, a, a golden scene of the, the media. The scene was taken from the upper register mm -hmm. of the T-shaped silk painting from Shindri's tomb, uh, indicating that the soul of Shindri has ascended to the heaven and be, be part of them. <laughs> wow. And the the coffin is at the bottom it's of the pit, right? It's outer coffin. This is outer coffin of the Shindri. Oh, mm -hmm. Okay. And the outer coffin is a funerary vessel used for containing her interior coffins, inner coffins in the middle chamber, oh. in the middle coffin chamber, and all the uh, a, a, a thousand pieces of funerary items in the side chambers. Oh. Its inner structure resembles the Chinese character Jing, meaning a well. Oh. So many uh, ancient notes call it a Jing, outer coffin. So how many layers are there? There's just one inner coffin and then one outer coffin, and that's it? Or are there multiple oh, well, layers? Xinjui had four layers of inner coffins oh, and one four. layer of outer, outer coffin. coffin. Why are there so many layers of... 
Well, the the coffin. coffin, the 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 inner coffin suggests her process, the process of her soul to ascend to the. So layer by layer, her uh -huh. soul ascends uh -huh. to heaven. Like the Russian, what? The Russian. Uh, what's it called? Plate, uh, like the doll, right? Like yeah. you open. The bigger one, one containing the smaller one, yeah. like like that. Wow. So there are four layers of. Coffin, inner coffin, and Coffins, uh -huh. one layer of outer coffin where all the artifacts uh, in were the discovered. side chambers. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, so her actually her corpse is downstairs. It's now preserved in the first floor, in, in, the, in the ground floor. Ground floor, floor. Uh -huh. and and people can actually see it, right? People actually, who mm -hmm. visit the museum can mm -hmm. actually see her corpse. Mm -hmm. I have actually visited it. How do you like it? <laughs> It's um, not as scary as uh -huh. one might think, uh -huh. um, but and it's it's really amazing. Like it looks very real, if you know what uh, I mean. Yeah, like yeah, people yeah. think it might look like mm -hmm. a mummy or, or you know like a, a, a hard. Well, well mummy is a dry corpse, but the yeah. but the corpse of Shinjui looks wet. Is you know wet. Yeah. Like you can, you not can, as wet as a no, living person, but, 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 but you can see the skin texture uh -huh. of her corpse. <laughs> Uh -huh. And like she's very white, obviously it's very like there's no skin color anymore, right? It's completely white, but like you can tell, like it's kind of dewy, like it's it's Black. very yeah, yeah. So that's <laughs> unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so for the she's she was kept for over two thousand more than two thousand years, mm -hmm. and still her hair was still there. Right there's. I remember seeing it was her hair. Uh, I'm not sure if on the top of her head it was a hair piece. A hair piece. Okay. Her remaining hair is just at the side, side of, of her. her head. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so so if you do have a chance to come to mm -hmm. the Hunan Museum, do have a look at you know her corp and everything because we could not ha um, take a video oh or a picture gosh. of <laughs> oh, gosh. this is actually a uh, glass so oh, um, yeah I, I, it scares me too um, so anyway this brings us to the end of our tour oh. um, I have to say it's really fascinating mm -hmm. I mean I've been to a lot of museums and and, and the artifacts that were discovered um, in these three tombs it's just, it's, it's amazing because you have to remind yourself these are things that people made more than 2,000 years ago, mm -hmm. right? They're so sophisticated. The comb, the, 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 the silk is something that, that, you know, you will use now. Mm -hmm. So to think, and also like the, the, the tripods and mm -hmm. the, the color, the painting, the, everything, it's just, it's, it's fascinating how well, first how well they're preserved, so we get a chance to look into history. Also, the fact that people had the capacity mm -hmm. of, of making That's these true. fabulous things, it just shows the people in Hunan, in Changsha, their, their strive for art, <laughs> for, 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 for music, Right, their passion for science. There's great appetite. Great appetite towards, the, towards the, the, the everything the in life. Mm -hmm. Right, their passion for life. Indeed. And their passion for eternity, life, mm -hmm. eternity, after life, the, the immortality. It, it really gives a full picture of how much people <laughs> want to live forever. Yeah, uh -huh. And the, the science and the, the Chinese medicine, the solar system, <laughs> everything. I mean, you really have to come to the museum. If you do get a chance to come to Changsha, come to the Hunan Museum and have a look yourself because it's truly fascinating and you won't regret it. So thank you so much, Monica, You're for welcome. taking us You're welcome. It's a pleasure. through this amazing journey. This is only Monday, so we're going to be here for an entire week and we're going to go to many places in Changsha. So don't go away. Stay tuned for more programs on this rising star city of Changsha. We're going to show you its culture, its history, its economy, its people, its life, its everything. So stay tuned with us. And thank you again, Monica, for being here with us. Bye. Wow.